Do you want to know how to power level your journeyman skills quickly and easily for the Maestro quest line? Well, stick around because by the end of this video, you will know just how to do exactly that. Now, before we get too far into the video, I do just want to apologize. About 50% of the recordings that I made for this video are just completely unusable because I'm an idiot. So this video is going to be a lot lower quality than what I would personally like. So I hope you can forgive me for that. But sometimes in life, even the best laid plans fuck up. So unfortunately, when it comes to the maestro quests or the maestro in general, you only get one shot at it per account. So when you're trying to make content out of it, if you fuck it up the first time, it's just what it is. So again, I hope you can put up with the lower quality for this video. And without further rambling, let's get into it. What's cracking everyone? Titanic Llama here, and today we will be going over everything that you need to know about when it comes to the Maestro. The quest line to unlock it and its requirements, how to quickly get the skill levels needed, the benefits of having a Maestro on your account, and finally, I'll be leaving two big tips at the very end of the video to shamelessly bait you into watching longer. Also, one really important thing that I did kind of forget to mention in the Journeyman video is that one of the major reasons I left the Journeyman until the 10th character slot is so we could quickly level up all of our other characters to level 100 before creating our 10th character. This should be fairly easy and quick once you have World 4 or even World 5 unlocked, and doing this will allow us to complete an Equinox Cloud that will unlock skilling nodes within the Equinox. We will want to continue to unlock all four of these nodes eventually, and these will come in very handy, but it isn't the end of the world if this isn't an option for you. But without further ado, let's get into the actual video. Alrighty, as far as the requirements for the Maestro Quest goes, there aren't really any, you just need to obtain a bag of nuts from the Gold Request line, which is a little more involved than it may sound. Compared to the Journeyman, the Maestro's Quest line is a lot longer purely because of these pre-quests. So, if you don't need help with the quest line, feel free to skip the quest section using the timestamps provided, and just know that you can obtain these nuts on any character, but the final section of the quest must be completed on your journeyman. For everyone who isn't skipping ahead, grab your pen and paper, because there will be a test on this next week. First off, we need to start Cowboy Jones's quests. The first six of these are just the intro to the World 2 skills and are very simple, so I won't really be covering these. The only thing to note with these quests is the quest Alchemical Apprentice, which requires you to unlock a bubble and get one distilled water. The bubble won't be an issue, but the water itself must be purchased from the Alchemy Liquids page. Just grabbing one out of your storage chest won't work. Other than that, these shouldn't be an issue. Once we're done with that, we will need to grab the next quest, which is the Notorious B.O.B., which will send us into the desert to find our first outlaw, Bob. He has three quests that we will need to complete. The first requires us to make 300 bullets, which the recipe for these are unlocked from the tasks unlock menu. The second requires you to get Bob a yellow bandana, which dropped from Sandy Pots. If you've progressed far enough into the game to have an elemental sorcerer, you really shouldn't have too much issue getting these. It took me about 10 minutes to farm out too. And finally, we just need to complete two Planet Express post office deliveries, which we can use a silver pen to reset so we can complete it twice in one day. Upon completing the third quest, you will get Bandit Bob's signed arrest warrant. With this in hand, head back to town and hand this in to Cowboy Jones. We will then need to complete his next quest, which is just to make a cowboy hat. This requires 100 leather and 750 nails from the Anvil Production tab. With all that out of the way, we can finally accept the Commence Criminal Crimes quest, which sends us even further into the desert in search of Goldrick, who holds our coveted bag of nuts. We will need to complete five of his quests in order to get our hands on his nuts. The first quest simply asks us to pick up 15 coins that will start spawning on the map. Now, you can't click on these, you do actually have to run over them to pick them up. The second quest requires us to get either 15 hoops in a row in a single catching minigame, or a total of 90 hoops across as many attempts as it takes to build up that 90 hoops. The third quest tasks us with gathering 200 copies of three different paintings of Goldrick. Each of these pictures are dropped from a specific mob, and these are the Mimics, Mafiosos, and Sandcastles. The fourth quest is a bit of a shitty one. We need to get Goldrick a golden plop, which dropped from poops in the World 1 sewers. And finally, the fifth quest, and the one that all of this was for, asks us to simply equip a golden helmet, 
a golden plate body, golden legs, and a single golden tool, and then, whilst wearing them, talk to Goldrick. Upon completion of that quest, he will give you his bag of nuts. And now that we have the bag of nuts, we can actually start the Maestro quest itself. Everything up until now can be completed on any class, but from here on out, you will want to be completing the rest of these quests on your journeyman. Just as it was with World 1, we are going to have to discover a hidden NPC in order to get these quests. So grab your nuts and take them to the Snelby's map and drop them on this cactus right here. This will spawn the Cactolite. There are four quests from the Cactolite, but the last one is simply accepting the Maestro class upgrade. So technically there's three steps to this quest line. The first two quests require us to get some decent skilling levels on our J-Man, which used to be an absolute nightmare. But these days it isn't too bad at all and I'll cover how to quickly get these levels in the next section of the video. But for now we will need level 32 mining, level 35 smithing, level 33 chopping for the first quest and level 23 fishing, 25 alchemy and 25 catching for the second. Once you are a skillful journeyman and you've got them out of the way, the last task to complete is to defeat Biggie Hours with Peanut Pete in your inventory. This peanut reduces your HP to 1, which means you will need to kill Biggie Hours without taking a single point of damage, which will require 594 defense. If you don't know how to spawn Biggie Hours, go and check out my mini boss guide. The link will be up in the top corner now ish. But once you've defeated Biggie Hours, head on back to our new cactus friend and ascend to your rightful place as a maestro. Now, with all of that out of the way, it's time for the main attraction. How to level up your skills nice and easily for the Maestro quests. Now I am going to assume that by the time most people go to unlock their Maestro they will at least have World 4 unlocked. World 4 does contain quite a lot of boosts to your skilling efficiency and experience gain which will come in very handy. If you're still only in World 3 the guide will still be relevant just some things may take a little bit longer that's all. Alrighty the first quest wants us to do the World 1 skills so that's where we're going to start. First up, we'll go over smithing. There's nothing too special here. We want to treat smithing just like any other class. You will want to purchase as many anvil points as you can afford with both coins and monster materials. Dump all of these points into speed to begin with and just start producing as much thread as you can. This should be enough to get your smithing up to 35 by the time you get around to doing your maestro quest as long as you remember to start producing as soon as you start your journeyman. But if not, there is a little trick that we can use. In the World 3 shop, there's this Anvil Reset Whetstone. This will reset your Anvil points on the character who uses it. So what you can do is wait for your Anvil to completely fill up and then reset your Anvil points and dump them all into EXP instead. This will greatly increase the amount of experience that you get when claiming your stockpiled production items. Just remember you will want to use another one of these and put all of your points back into speed afterwards. A note with these stones though, only use a single stone at a time. If you have a stack of them in your inventory and try to use one, the whole stack will be consumed, which I'm sure is working perfectly as intended. Next up, we'll go over mining. This is probably the slowest of the World 1 skills to level, purely because we have to reach certain mining levels in order to unlock the better maps with higher experience rates. So for level 1 to 10, you'll just want to equip some Icing Iron Bites and all of the mining related cards that you have access to, Focusing on mining speed first, then efficiency, and then mining experience. Just hanging out on copper for a little while, it won't take long, and whilst you're here, you may as well do the goblins quest, as they do give a good chunk of mining experience. Once you're a level 8, head back to town and upgrade to an iron pick. This will give you a pretty decent boost in the experience gained whilst mining. Upon entering the second mining map, I went and grabbed a few single stacks of both Icing Iron Bites and Stained Pearls, along with a handful of one hour time candies. I swapped in my two skilling AFK gain cards because I was going to be using time candies. The time candies aren't needed, you can just AFK, but I do often get asked when is the best time to use time candies and I really don't see using a handful of time candies to get through the Maestro quest line as a waste. If you do decide to go the candy route, you'll want to make sure your nutrient network is turned off whilst doing this. Once you're set up, you will want to equip a single icing iron bite and a single stained pearl if you have access to them and pop a time candy. This will greatly increase the experience that you gain and it will only consume one icing iron bite and one stained pearl each time. 
Using this method, it only took me 5 1 hour time candies in order to open up the level 25 portal. Just make sure that you do go back to town at level 15 and upgrade to a golden pick. At this stage, I would suggest to stone this pick with the highest available stones that you have. Once the level 25 portal is open, you have two options. You can either just AFK for a few hours here on Dimentia, or continue with the same process that we did for gold, but just on Dimentia. Either way, this shouldn't take too long, I'd say around 2-5 to five hours in order to hit level 32, depending on your card levels, etc. And finally, for world 1, we have woodcutting, which isn't too bad as it always seems easier to level woodcutting over mining. We will want to follow a similar process to mining from level 1 to 8. Equip a stack of saucy logs, swap in all of your chopping related cards, again prioritising chopping speed, then efficiency, then experience. Depending on your base efficiency, you can either chop jungle logs or toilet logs in order to get these initial levels. Once you hit level 8, upgrade to an iron hatchet and either continue to chop toilet logs or you can head to the first map of world 3 and see if you have the efficiency to chop tundra logs which you should by this stage. If you can, the experience here will probably far outweigh toilet logs. At this point, it's completely up to you whether you decide to use the same method that we did for mining, equipping a single saucy log at a time and using time candy, or just AFKing. With those skills done, we can now move on to the World 2 skills, and these used to be an absolute nightmare, but these days they actually aren't too bad. We'll go over alchemy first, because as long as you remember to put your journeyman into a cauldron after creating him, making sure that you put your journeyman in the same cauldron as your shaman or boobo, as this talent here will increase the alchemy experience gained on other characters sharing the same cauldron with your shaman or boobo. If this isn't fast enough for you and you don't really care about efficiency, there is a much faster method yet again. You can use balloons in World 2 Town to get alchemy experience. If you do decide to do this, I would only use the small green balloons and save your medium and large balloons for much later in the game. Now, you could also use pearls, but I would highly suggest not wasting those on alchemy. Next up is by far the easiest of all of the World 2 skills, fishing, which is actually kind of hilarious to say these days, as when I originally made my maestro, getting these fishing levels was one of the most dreaded things in Eidolon at the time. Massive shout out to anyone watching this who does remember those days. Okay, so remember at the very start of the video when I mentioned that I made sure to unlock the Equinox skilling nodes before making my journeyman? Well, this is why. Because of how fishing pools work, you can actually fish in the Equinox at zero efficiency and still catch fish. And if you were doing this, the experience rates here are absolutely bonkers. With a stack of Slurp and Herms and Aqua Pearls if you have them, getting to level 23 fishing shouldn't take more than 10 to 15 minutes. Just keep in mind that you cannot use Candy or AFK within the Equinox, so this will have to be done actively. If you didn't unlock the Equinox prior to making your journeyman, you have a couple of options still. The first is to obviously level up your journeyman to level 100 for the Equinox Cloud and then continue to unlock the skilling nodes. And the second, much slower method is to use your fishing minigames and balloons to level this skill up. Keep in mind, you don't have to be great at the fishing minigame to still get a good chunk of experience, so don't stress about that. Obviously, the better you score, the more experience, but even if you manage to miss every single fish and hit the first bomb that spawns, you'll still get a respectable amount of experience. This method, however, is, as I said, a lot slower, so I would probably just suggest to focus on unlocking the Equinox first and doing it that way. But this is entirely up to you. And finally, we have Catching, which these days is actually the worst skill to try and level for the Maestro quest, in my opinion. The reason for this is we don't really have any easy access to Catching nodes with good experience rates early on. For Catching, we want to use the same tactic that we did for mining and chopping, equip a stack of the catching boost food, all of your catching related cards, and head to the highest catching spot that you can reach. For me, that was fruit flies. I actively farmed for about 15 minutes, used a couple of catching mini games to hit level 15, went back to town to craft my golden net which I did use stones on. Then, just like mining and chopping, I grabbed a couple of single stacks of the boost food, a handful of candies, and went back to fruit flies. On fruit flies, I do believe this only took me 7 candies. I can't actually remember because I'm an idiot and I actually balked the recording of the catching segment of the video. So, yeah. 
Um, it won't take too many though. With all that being said, you don't actually have to use any time candies if you don't wish, but it certainly does speed up the process. And again, I get a lot of questions on when are good times to use time candies. And the mice request to me is one of those times that it makes sense to dip into them. Even if you choose to not use time candies, getting these levels will only take about two to five days depending on how often you check Eidolon, which still isn't too bad in the grand scheme of things. With all of the skilling out of the way, the only thing left is to defeat Biggie Hours, which if you are struggling to get the defense, I would suggest just grabbing the strongest set of armor off your best character and transferring it to your maestro purely to get this quest done. But now with all of the quests out of the way, why exactly do we want a maestro? Well, there are three reasons really. The first reason is this talent here, Printer Goes Burr. Using this skill will give you a set amount of hours worth of 3D prints with a percent chance to not have a cooldown. Meaning if you get lucky, you can use this skill quite a few times each day. The time given and the percentage chance to not have a cooldown are dependent on how many talent points you have within this skill. For example, on my main account, I have 291 talent points in this skill, which gives me eight hours worth of prints with a 79% chance to not have a cooldown. And it's not uncommon to get five plus procs daily. And I think my current record for procs in a single day is about 17. So as we progress through the game, this talent is gonna come in very handy for pushing vials, bubble levels, and even generating atoms at end game. The second reason is the talent right hand of action. This skill will boost your other character's skilling efficiency if your maestro has a higher skill level than your other characters. This only works on world one to three skills though, so keep that in mind. Again, the efficiency given depends on the talent level. So on my main account, I have this talent at level 284, which gives 111% skilling efficiency to any of my other characters whose skills levels are lower than my maestro's. Early on, I wouldn't stress too much about trying to get your maestro skill levels higher than the rest of your characters as as we progress through the game, this actually becomes easier to do. And I will touch more on this in the Void Walker video. The third and final reason we want a maestro is because it's one step closer to having a Void Walker. And that's it really. Now, this video kind of ended up being a lot longer than I thought, so when it comes to things like Crystal Countdowning and actively pushing your skills higher than the rest of your characters, as I said, I'll cover this and everything else related to the Void Walker in the next episode of the Journeyman Guide. Now, I did tease two big tips at the start of this video, so let's get into those. Okay, so the first tip. It's a really good idea to progress an elemental sorcerer through the World 2 quest line up until the quest where Goldrick asks for the pitches. These items can be very easily farmed on an elemental sorcerer prior to even creating a journeyman. But that's not the tip. These pitches are super easy to green stack, so you will want to keep the quest active on an elemental sorcerer in order to farm out 10 million of each pitcher eventually. This will pay dividends in the long run. You don't need to green stack them now, but do keep this in mind for the future when you do start to push green stacks. And tip number two, I know a lot of people will read this quest dialogue here and be too scared to drop the elderly peanut, but this is a bit of a red herring. You do still want to drop this and add it to your slab. Now, if you're not quick enough and it does disappear, don't freak out. Just abandon the quest, head back to Cactolite and accept the quest again. This will get you another peanut, Pete. Just remembering to do this now saves you from having to go through the whole quest line again. And that's it, everything that you need to know about the Maestro. The Voidwalker video will take a little while to get out because I have been neglecting my free-to-play guide and I do want to get the World 5 video out before the Voidwalker video. So that's going to be my next big project that I'll be working on and hopefully it won't take too long to get it out. And to all of those people who have been waiting for the World 5 video, I do apologize it's taken so long and I do appreciate your patience. But with all that being said, I've been Titanic Llama, you've been watching a video, and I'm out. Peace.